So in this video, we're going to talk about chemical reactions, how they happen, and then we're going to get into a little bit of water chemistry, because water chemistry is going to be huge in biological systems, obviously. So chemical reaction, you can see one that I've written out here, is going to be, yeah, consist of reactants and products, right? So the reactants are going to be what you put into the reaction, and then the products are what you end up with. So um, a couple of things are going to affect how a reaction is going to happen. Um, one of the big ones is going to be temperature. So hopefully, as you know, what's going to happen with molecules is as you heat them up, as you raise the temperature, they're going to start moving a lot more, right? So the higher the temperature, the more movement is going to be occurring. And so if we have a reaction we want to happen by having two things collide together, if we increase the temperature and they're moving more, the chances of them colliding goes up, right? So temperature can increase the rate of a reaction. Then the next one is concentration of the products and the reactants. So obviously if we have a hydrogen and an oxygen that we want to react and we only have one of each, that's probably going to take a while for them to meet up with each other, even if the temperature is up and they're moving around, as compared to if we had a beaker full of hydrogen and oxygen, tons and tons of them, then they're going to have a much higher chance of colliding, right? So the concentration is definitely going to affect that. And then the last one is going to be catalysts. And catalysts are actually going to be something that will help a reaction happen even if it doesn't want to happen. So let's say you have a hydrogen and an oxygen, but they're really not interested in one another for whatever reason. What can happen is you can have a catalyst come and say, well, bond together anyway, man, and it's going to make them bond together. So we have catalysts in our systems, and they're called enzymes. And we have enzymes that do pretty much anything you can think of in your body. All of these different processes we're going to talk about in class are going to be based on enzymes. So they're really, really important because they make reactions um, occur. Okay, so those are going to be things that can actually affect how fast a reaction can happen. Now we're going to start talking about water chemistry. So let's kind of review what we know about water already. We know that it's an oxygen bonded to two hydrogens, and each of those bonds is going to be a polar covalent bond, right? And the polar part means that the oxygen is going to have that partial negative charge, and the hydrogens are going to have that partial positive charge. So that's going to be um, really important when we start talking about the weak associations that it can make with other water molecules called hydrogen bonds. So um, let me see if I can get my little thing here. All right. So let's talk about how um, this actually works. I got my pen. Okay. Ooh, I didn't know I had those types of options, but we're fine. Okay. So I'm going to have, um, whoops, sorry, this thing is so finicky sometimes. Okay, so here is one water molecule, and here's another one right here. Here's another one right here. Oh, wow, that's awful. Okay, I actually do want to see if I could change colors. Okay, now, remember, we said that oxygen has a partial negative charge, and hydrogen has a partial positive charge. Partial negative um, partial positive, right? So what's going to happen is, as we've talked about before, opposites attract, right? So this is going to be attracted to this, and it's going to form this little temporary bond, and so that's called a hydrogen bond. So the same thing's going to happen with this hydrogen and this oxygen here, and so on and so on, okay? So why do we care about that? Well, this whole hydrogen bonding situation is exactly why you, when you jump into a pool and you belly flop, why it really hurts, right? That's because of those hydrogen bonds that this water is forming. So what I was just talking about is cohesion, and that's talking about water's attraction to other water molecules through that process I just showed you in that picture. And so that's responsible for surface tension. So that's the exact reason why, let's say you're in an airplane and you're flying over the ocean and the plane's about to crash and you're like, oh, well, it's water. You should probably just say to yourself, um, oh crap, that's water, because what's going to happen is you're going to hit it really hard because of those hydrogen bonds. The way I think about it is as if water is kind of like Velcro, where, I mean, you know, if you're going to hang from Velcro, you're probably going to fall. It's going to come apart, but it will hold something together temporarily, right? So you've got these water molecules that are cruising around and they're kind of temporarily sticking to one another, and then they can kind of break apart. Now, if you try to do that to a bunch of them at once, it's going to be a lot tougher, and that's exactly what happens when you belly flop into a pool right? All right. 
Now the other thing that's cool about water is adhesion and that's when it's going to be attracted to other substances and so um, that's going to help it to dissolve things which is going to be important, right? So um, here's a little rule of thumb to help you. Um, polar molecules and polar molecules will dissolve. Polar and nonpolar will not dissolve. Nonpolar and nonpolar will dissolve. So you can see a rule of thumb. Like and like dissolves. Down here, like and like dissolves. But when you try to do opposites, they don't dissolve. Okay. So let me give you an example of a nonpolar um, substance. That would be like oil right, or fats. Um, that's basically just carbons and hydrogens, and they have a very, very close electronegativity, so they're not going to be polar, they're nonpolar. And as it says right here, polar and nonpolar do not dissolve. And if you think about it, if you try and mix oil and water, it doesn't dissolve, right? Um, down here, nonpolar and nonpolar, that's an interesting one, because a lot of us think, well, oil just doesn't dissolve in anything, and that's not true. Um, if you find another nonpolar substance, the oil will dissolve in it. So a perfect example would be acetone, which is um, nail polish remover. If you were to pour that into oil and shake it up, it will completely dissolve and never separate because acetone is also nonpolar. So you can totally hit pause right now if you're really feeling crazy, and you can actually get some nail polish remover and test my hypothesis that I just gave you. Boom. Okay, now um, the next thing that water is going to be really good at doing is storing heat, and that's due to its hydrogen bonds. Now remember, we talked about the fact that it's like Velcro, right? Where they're kind of sticking to one another. Now let's say that we try to heat it up. What's gonna happen is it's going to take a little bit more effort to get them to break apart so they can start moving a lot faster, right? Now um, that means it's going to take a lot of energy to get water to go up in temperature. Okay, so water tends to hold on to its temperature for a longer period of time than, let's say, the air, right? You've seen it here in Colorado. You've got, um, let's say, you know, a huge temperature change, like it goes from 80 to 40 the next day. Well, that's a big air temperature change, but I bet if you felt the water, the water hasn't changed that much, and that's because of those hydrogen bonds, okay? Now, why do we care about this? Well, think about your body. Didn't we say, I mean, that's like a well-known fact that your body is mostly made of water, and um, we don't like our body temperature to go much above 98.6, right? That would be a fever. Well, having all that water in our body helps us to maintain our body temperature, high or low, right? Let's say it's, you know, negative 60 degrees out, we go outside, we're not going to instantly turn to negative 60 degrees, and that's because we have water stabilizing our body temperature. So that's why it's really important to have that in our system. Um, another thing that water is going to be great at is it's going to be great at dissolving things as long as they have a charge. And I believe I've got a really good picture of this um, in here somewhere. You definitely need to check out my sweet um, PowerPoints because they have really nerdy comics on them that um, if you're a true scientist, you'll like them. Okay, this picture is great because this is showing how salt actually dissolves in water. Um, so what's happening here, and I'll see if I can um, make this a little smaller so you can see. There we go. Um, is you can actually see that the um, sodium has a positive charge, the chlorine has a negative charge, and what happens when salt dissolves in water is they actually get separated out, and you can see the water molecules actually surround these different guys. Now, one thing I want you to notice about this picture, notice the orientation of the water molecules here compared to here, right? Hopefully you're noticing that around the sodium, which has a positive charge, the red is going to be what's closest to it, and that's representation of the oxygen. So remember, oxygen is a partial negative charge and opposites attract. So since um, sodium is positive, the negative oxygens are going to be more closely associated with it. As opposed to over here, if you look at the chlorine, which has a negative charge, the positive hydrogens, which are the white parts or gray parts of these molecules, are more attracted to the chlorine than the red. Right? So that's going to help with the whole dissolving process. Okay, now um, let's see. Hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So hydrophilic are going to be anything that is attracted to water, right? Like phyle means like. Um, hydrophobic is going to be anything that does not like water. So you could think of like oil, right? It's afraid of water, okay? Now the last little part that we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to do on the next video, and that's going to be pH and how um, water is associated with pH.